it not ipop who's enforcing ghost monday following the nigerian government's unexpected extradition of mazi inamdekano Haru head of Biafra Zionist Group, the indigenous people of Biafra Hip-Hop, and the subsequent recommencement of a stilled trial. The group immediately issued a weekly Monday sit at home, a order across the whole of the Southeast East political zone to protest the incarceration of their leader and demanding his immediate unconditional release. High Pops Ghost Monday directive initially received blanket support and compliance across the southeast, but its subsequent negative multiplier toll on the economy and general well-being of the people soon became apparent, eliciting Russia's public opprobrium against it, following which the sessionist group reviewed its initial stand by proceeding to issue a fresh directive that the seat at home should be observed only the days Mazi Inamdekano is scheduled to appear in court. Curiously, despite IPOP's official review of its initial directive, observation of the seat at home has continued unabated across the region. With the reports of attacks by unknown enforcers and residents in some states accused of defying the directive, some of the most recent being the outrageous attack on school children writing their work exams, the killing of Anglican priests, attack security formations, and destructions of truck laden with goods alongside the continued lockdown of major business hubs. IPOP has denied culpability for these acts of violence, blaming them on sabotage and criminal elements, camouflaging as its members. So the question begging for answer is, if not IPOP, who are those spreading mayhem in the southeast under the guise of enforcing a supposedly reviewed sit at home order? What could be the motive behind the actions of these forces? Of discord. The growing complexity of the mayhem in the southeast, which has the federal eastern state government on one hand, and hypop and other non state actors as major stakeholders, necessitate the need to be holistic in any attempt at identifying the masterminds of the last disturbances. From a strategic standpoint, the ongoing melee in the southeast could be attributed to the mischievous machinations of forces seeking some measure of control over the affairs of the region. They range from unscrupulous politicians, greedy businessmen, rival pro-Biafra groups, hip-hop factions, criminal elements, and other hip-hop itself. Let's do some scenario building. Naturally, the first suspect would be hip-hop itself. Considering its adversarial relationship with governments at the federal and state levels, there is a possibility that the widespread allegations that IPOP and its security arm, the Eastern Security Network, are responsible for the disturbances in the Southeast could actually be correct. Despite groups' persistent denials, IPOP could actually be double speaking, dealing publicly claiming to have reviewed its earlier directive on the seat at some order while covertly enforcing it with the aim of bringing the political authorities of the Southeast, which it regards as impacts of the federal government to their knees and ultimately coerce them into supporting its campaign for Mr. Kano's release as well as its the proscription. The no love loss relationship between the Sessionist Group and both the federal and eastern state governments is common knowledge. Another possibility is that the disturbances are being perpetrated by rival factions of IPOP, prelude to the rendition of Mr. Kano from Kenya. There had been viral reports that IPOP had been factionalized, consistent to 
visceral wrangling within its leadership structure over money issues, resulting in the emergence of new arrowheads with separate ideas and approaches to the struggle. The ongoing melee could actually be the handwork of the disgruntled member of these other factions of the group who no longer feel obliged to know to to Kano's whims and caprices or adhere to his philosophies. These fifth commun columnists could have decided to obtain the apple cart via superfuge and other acts of sabotage. What about Ipop's rivals? Names withheld who could actually have lashed on the lacuna created by the Kano's incarceration and the seeming load in its activities to jumpstart the promotion of their own agendas, covertly working to weaken its solid support base across the southeast and the rest of what was formerly known as the Bight of Africa. These rivals could actually be issuing orders, countering IPO's view of its seats at home, as well as enforcing them with the aim of smearing its image. The truth is that IPOB's rising profile since its emergence, which was dwarfed those of other pro Biafra groups, has elicited the envy of these rivals and is a likely motive for sabotage. Agents of the federal government, the Nigerian government has never hidden its disdain for IPOB, which explains its determination to keep the group in check. Using any means possible, its forceful clamps down on the activities of the sectarian group which it has since labeled a terrorist organization and the manner it extrajudicially extradicted Mr. Kanu back to the country to continue his trial on multiple criminal charges and snippets of its extreme resolve to maintain the status quo cool by all means. The Python dances in the southeast alongside the massive military deployment to the region are pointers to its commitment to quelling IPOP's Sessionist men. The possibility that government's fifth colonies have infiltrated the IPOP and now weakened it from within cannot be ruled out. Sabotage propaganda, subterfuge are age long, highly potent stratagems of warfare, as is traditionally the case in most conflict theaters. There are individuals and organizations that benefit from the spoils of war. The ongoing melee in the southeast, which has created room for opportunists to promote their private agendas, could actually be the handwork of conflict entrepreneurs stoking the fires of violence to make profit. Some of these conflicts merchants could be power seeking politicians, unscrupulous businessmen, or outright rocks exploiting the confusing scenarios in the region to spread mayhem and make undue profits. With 2023 in the corner and the state of insecurity in the region, political profiteers and criminal elements could be cashing in on world brouhaha to further their lacinous interests. Now, regardless of which of the foregoing scenarios turns out to be correct, the outcome for the Southeast will be unpalatable. There is no way the Hungary madness can be beneficial to the region and its people. It can just be rationalized or justified using any parameter. So anybody or group, internal or external, that is responsible for the subsisting anomaly in Hebrew land should consider the negative multiplier consequences of their actions and due to a detour. The writer calls on all genuine stakeholders, not criminal minds, in the southeast to forge a common front in putting an abrupt end to the raging anarchy in the sub region. From the politicians, traditional rulers, religious leaders, self determination agitators, prominent sons and daughters, and all indigenous of the region, alongside other concerned parties, all hands must be placed on deck to hash out visible panaces to check the ongoing madness that threatens the peace and quiet of a region 
that was once renowned as the most peaceful in the country post civil war. So guys, let me know what you think in the comments about the news. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. And we'll see you on the next news. Bye.